What's up, y'all? I'm Robbie Cass. I go to my hubby class of 2022, and I'm undecided. <laughs> Robbie Kaz, welcome to What's in Your Bag. Thanks for having me. No problem. So I want to take you back. A couple months ago, I was at Mount Healthy. I was a guest speaker to the Boys and Girls Basketball Program. You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Now the athletic director, uh, Diana Riemann Schneider, got that name right, Riemann yeah. Schneider, uh, she asked me to come out and speak to you all. I uh, had a great time. Um, obviously, you and I talked a little bit after. But then she sent me a message recently, and she said that you would be a great guest to have on What's in Your Bag. So I went and did a little bit of research on you and your journey in basketball. She was 100% correct. I went, there's no doubt I need to get him on What's in Your Bag. And the reason why is because, you know, we you know, have a lot of young people that watch this interview series. And a lot of young people look for little nuggets that they can take and apply to their game and their journey. And I think you have a lot of good nuggets that I want to share today to help out this next generation of basketball players. Okay? okay. So when you come on What's in Your Bag, there's a couple things we need to do. One, we're going to discuss your bag. Then you have three items you brought. One has to be a pair of shoes. Now, you know I'm a shoe guy. Yeah. So I'm always excited about that. And then the other two items... I have no idea what they are. I don't have any idea what shoes you brought either, but the items, I have no idea what they are. And the two items have to represent your journey in life and basketball. So I'm excited to take these folks on this journey here. So let's start off with your bag. Tell us about the bag. Uh, the bag is pretty simple. Uh, I always loved elite bags since I was little. And I, uh, since I was little, I just always made sure I carried a bag because I love basketball, and this has just always been a thing I did. So, then I just always make sure I keep my bag. And just it's just a lead bag, Nike, my yep. favorite, my favorite. How long have you had the bag? Uh, probably about a probably about a year now. I got it before last basketball season. Okay, yeah. was that a team issue? No, nah, it's just you picked just a it up. Bag. Yep. And keep all your stuff in there. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things is when Robbie, when we started this series, it was important that the kids brought in a bag because bags just are such a big part of, you know, the game of basketball. Everybody's yeah. got to have a fresh bag, right? Everybody got to have a bag. Absolutely. A lot of times kids have their like numbers um, on their bag, their jersey number. You're number one, mm -hmm. right? I think you've always worn number one. Would that be correct? Yes. And, uh, not my freshman year. I wore 11. Okay. And we had a good senior on our team. We had it. So, yeah. You had to tell him he's got to <laughs> give that up. So why number one? Uh, okay, so. Oh, that's a good story, I, man. That's a good story, that's a good story. <laughs> so when I was younger, I, I, I always wore number 10 because my birthday is May 10th. So when I got to about to middle school, my dad coached Carly Jones. That's yep. in the league now. So I always just looked up to him and just, and then once I got around him, he became like a big brother to me. And we got real close. Like we talked here and there, FaceTime. He just, he took me under his wing and he just teach me a lot and just this is somebody this is somebody I look up to and that's why I wear that and he told me he told me he said he said Robbie if you're gonna wear that number one you gotta be a bucket and it just stuck with me. That's so. that's good to hear. Uh, Carleek is one of the great players to come out of the Cincinnati area. Went to Aiken. Mm -hmm. um, you started your career off at Aiken. Um, so you were at Aiken for three years mm -hmm. and then transferred to Mount Healthy. Now, a lot of kids who transfer schools, it's not always easy. Just forget sports. Just think about the environment. You go from one environment to another. Academically, there's always a difference and a change. For you, going from Aiken, and your, your dad coached at Aiken for 11 years, and you go from playing for three years. I believe, did you start your freshman year? I started every year. You started every <laughs> year, all three years at Aiken, 
and then you've got to transfer and start over at new school. How was that for you? Uh, it was kind of it was kind of weird. Um, nervous. I was nervous. I didn't know what the environment was gonna be like. It was just it was like a new start. That's what me and my dad said. It's just a new start. And I went to my hubby when I was younger, but still, I didn't know like all those kids and how they acted. So it was just. It was just something I had to deal with, just a new start. But I, 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 um, I adjusted really well, so, and I like it. So it worked out. And that's good. And you, you said it's a fresh start. A lot of times, sometimes, and you, you're obviously you've you've started since your freshman year. You've been a good player for for a while. Sometimes it's good to start start fresh and yeah. get another energy, another level of energy. Have you found that at Mount Healthy? Definitely. It's I'm around better people, got better resources, so it. it it all worked out. It's like it. I just think everything happens for a reason. So yeah. Yeah, there's no question about that. Um, academically, that transition has gone well for you. You're a good student as well. Yeah, uh, it went. It's been going well. The senior year has been tough, so just trying to finish out strong. What do you have? Three point eight. Three point seven. Three point so, seven. Yeah. Okay, we got to bump that up a little bit. We got to get to a three point yeah. eight or four point zero. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been working. It's been a tough year, but I just been staying focused. So, yeah. And I know academics are very important to you. Yeah, they are. I'm sure your dad stays on yeah, you about parents. that. Yeah, they they stay on me about that. That's a good. Definitely. That's a good thing. Let's go ahead and dive into your shoes. You know I'm ready for that. <laughs> Curry Force. Okay. All right. Yes, yeah. The, the, the low top. All right. Okay. So you wearing these right now? I'm wearing these right now. Okay. So uh, let's talk a little bit about these. Right. Why I, these? I, I could have picked a lot of shoes, but these right here. These these are shoes I scored my thousand points this year. So these I probably never gonna get these away. Probably never throw them away. So yeah, it means a lot to me. It, it's always a goal I wanted to reach. So yeah, that's why I bring these shoes today. Uh, a thousand point is uh, is something special. Uh, Carly told you if you wear number one, you better be a bucket, and uh, you lived up to that. Yeah, uh, right now, you're averaging what 24, 24, point, yeah. 24 points a game. Um, also, you're averaging around four assists a game, close to that, mm -hmm. and you're leading the conference in points and assists. And as I said before when we started, um, I think you've got some gold nuggets for young people out there. And here's why. So, how tall are you? We talked about this before we started. 5'9". <laughs> You're 5'9", all right? I'm 5'10 and a half. And I have felt like my entire basketball career, I always had a chip on my shoulder. I felt I had to grind extra because in the basketball world, 5'9", 5'10 and a half isn't really big, isn't mm -hmm. tall. So you have to really put in a little bit of extra work and extra grind. Do you feel like you have that chip on your shoulder? And what type of grind have you had over the course of your high school career? Uh, definitely had that chip on my shoulder, especially this year. And the grind, I, I've just been at it since I was younger. And just, but when I was about nine years old, I just decided to take it serious. And I've been at it ever since, just late nights in the gym, early mornings, just grinding on my dad, just me and him. So yeah, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely been paying off. So yeah, just gotta keep at it. What type of work do you put in in the off season, for example? Off season, I do skill work, and then I um, I do a speed and agility, and I have a trainer for that. I just work on my body, keep my body in shape. You got to shout out your trainer now. Uh, my shout uh, shout out to Beat Personal Training. Yeah, all those guys helped me out since the, since middle school. So yeah. Okay, so let me ask you this question: Since you started your freshman year, you're starting your senior year. What's the difference between freshman year Robbie and senior year Robbie? Definitely the maturity, and I can say my body. It's definitely those two things. Um, when I was a freshman, it was just, I was just a little scrawny kid, just out there, just stood in the corner and shoot. And now it's just, I'm more, I'm more of a leader. I'm more of a on the court leader and off the court leader. Just, just, that's the biggest thing for me, being a leader on and off the court, because everybody on my team, everybody in my family just looks up to me. So 
like my siblings and stuff. So everything I do is being watched. So that's that's what's big to me. So what type of leader are you? Um, are you a vocal lead by example, a little mixture of both? See, I always been a leader, but when I was younger, I just I led by example. But now I'm more of a a vocal leader. I've been getting better at that. So yeah. So was that a point of emphasis that you and your father have talked about, saying you've got to lead more vocally? Definitely, especially this year, because I play with a bunch of like, sophomores and juniors. They have they don't have the experience that I have. So he tell them like, you got to talk to them. You got to tell them what to do, and just be that vocal leader, because nobody else is. So. And what what type of work do you put in during the season? Because you've always heard, you know, players are made in the off season. You can put a lot of work in, and when you get in season. You're playing a lot of games. You have school and all that. So some people just show up to the gym and hoop. Is that you? No. I, I've heard that's not you. <laughs> no. Talk about that a little bit. Um, definitely. Now, some days, yeah, but most days I hit my dad up. He'd be like, before or after, can we get a little workout in? Just get shots up, keep my game tight. So definitely. just I, when you After practice, if you leave, you're doing something wrong. You don't want to be your best self. So, after practice, we just work out, and then before, if we can't do it after, we do it before, so yeah. And that's great being the best player on the team and also the leader. Mm -hmm. So the other players, not only your other, you know, classmates at the same grade level and the younger kids, see the best player and the leader working that hard. Mm -hmm. So you looked up to Carleek, and others are looking up to you now. They've got eyes on you, and that's very important. And I know you take a lot of pride in them watching you and you showing them a great example. Definitely. That's that's the what I I just try to like try to rub off on people and just give people the right right direction to go cuz like now I've been working out after practice every day. Now half of the team is staying and getting shots up after practice. So it's like it just makes me feel better when you just yeah, so yeah, definitely. Oh, that's that's good stuff. I want to talk about your mentality because you come off real cool and you're kind of soft spoken, but you're a killer on the court. And I think you take that mentality of whoever you're playing against, you're going for the head, you want to be the best player in the court, you want to be the best player in the league. Am I right? Yeah. And you guys right now in the league are two and one, mm -hmm. correct? You guys are getting ready to play Edgewood on Tuesday. They're three and oh in the league, top in the league. You're the number one scorer in the league at 24. The second leading score at 21 is Caleb Allen, yep. who's the star player at Edgewood. So Tuesday, it's on. <laughs> number one and number two going against each other, the top team in the league being Edgewood. Are you prepared for that? And what's your mentality going into that? I'm definitely prepared for that. This is the one I've been waiting for. Yeah, I, I figured. Definitely. And my mentality is just, like, I've been, I've been overlooked my whole life because, like you said, mm. like you said, five nine, not very athletic. So you don't get all the shine that everybody else do. So I've, I've constantly been working. And it's just like, it's that chip on my shoulder where I just know I got to, every time I step out on the court, I got a point to prove. And whoever's out there is just basically in my way. And I just got to go kill. That's just how I look at it. Just trying to get something done and getting killed and, and killing them. I love that. <clears throat> and I'm going to tell you a quick story. When I was playing basketball for the Bearcats, Mm -hmm. um, my first year, I was really struggling because here I am, 5'10 and a half, and I've got pros on my team. Kenyon Martin, Reuben Patterson, Melvin Levitt, all guys that get drafted. Steve Logan, All-American, top scorer in Bearcat history. Got all these guys, and I couldn't find my niche. So we had a guy named Hubie Brown come into practice. Are you familiar with Hubie Brown? Mm -hmm. Longtime coach, uh, NBA analyst, uh, great basketball mind. And so he came into our practice, and he spoke to everyone, and here I am, little walk on, 5'10 and a half. I come up to him and I'm saying, Coach Brown, I'm struggling. Can you give me some advice to kind of help me get through this? And he said, all right, you're short. And I said, yeah, I'm short. Because the next, you know, guy was like Dewan Baker. And he's, you know, the guy I'm guarding. He's like, you know, 6'4". Yeah. And he said to me, I'll never forget this. He said, Find something that you do really, really well and focus in on it and make sure everybody in the gym, fans, coaches, everybody knows you do that really, really well. 
And he goes, you'll be fine. So Robbie, on the court, what do you do really, really well that nobody else does? Uh, like I said, just be that leader. and Just have that IQ, the highest IQ on the floor. That's, that's what I mainly try to focus on. Because I have a young team, so when I'm on the court, I just got to make sure that like, when it's time for me to get the ball, I get the ball. And when it's time for them to do something, I tell them what to do. So just yeah, that. just talking to my teammates, cheering my teammates on. Because everybody don't do that. Everybody don't just cheer and pick your team up when they make mistakes. So right. that's just what I focus on. And there's another thing about you. If you go back and look at your stats, you guys just played Batavia the other day. You had 29 points. There have been several games where you had 30-point games uh, mm -hmm. this season. You're a very unselfish player. Obviously, you lead the league in assists. Um, and that's one thing that the athletic director said to me about how unselfish you are. And that's an important part to your game. And, um, and I think when the best player who averages 24 points is also unselfish, that also helps the team concept. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've never, like, since I was real little, I've been taught to play the right way. And never, I've never been a selfish player. And I've never been the star player either. I haven't always been a star player. So now that I am, it's just, it's, it's easy. So like, you get buckets and pass the ball. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's just it's to make the game more easy. So. If you were to say there was one player, um, maybe in the NBA, and I think I know your answer to this, that you look up to and you, you basically steal moves from, who would it be? Uh, I, I go, I look at a lot of like C.J. McCollum. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I thought you were going to say Kyrie, but go ahead. Nah, not Kyrie. Um, C.J. McCollum, like guys like him. I, I watch Steph Curry too. I try not to watch a lot because he, he's he's a great player. But yeah. like guys like C.J. McCollum, Damian Lillard, like guys who just can create space and create their own shot. It's just, I like the Dame. Yeah, that's, that's who I look at. And you know C.J.'s story, how he... He was another guy that was overlooked, and he really put in a lot of grind. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I know a lot about him, so, yeah. And I watch his moves and just how he created a lot of space. That's, that's what sticks out to me, and that's kind of how I play, too. So, Have you ever seen the picture of him in high school playing in the state championship game against St. X? No. I'm going to show you that when we get off here. He's about this tall. He looks like he's about this tall. <laughs> you know he was really small mm -hmm. coming up? He was up. real little. He was. He had a chip on his shoulder. So that's a good one for you to look up to. All right, good on the shoes. Let's jump into your next item. Okay. All right. Uh, that's my seventh grade AAU jersey. Okay. And that's uh, the BTC Trojans. Uh, it was ran by Coach Berto, the head coach at uh, Withrow. Mm -hmm. So yeah, shout out to him. And I picked this. This is kind of where I I figured out I could be good. And then I, I took off a little bit. I started playing really well. Because before that, I was just a short, fat kid that just, <laughs> <laughs> I like, I just, when I, because I used to play football. Mm -hmm. And when I was nine years old, I just told my dad, I was on the way to football practice. And I told my dad, I said, I don't want to play football no more. And he said, why? I said, I just want to focus on basketball. And he said, all right, that's cool with me. And just before, that, ever since then, I've just been working out, just mm -hmm. trying to get better. Then when I got to middle school, I started getting a little, like a little good. And then once I, I met him, I met Coach Berto. And it's like, he, everybody else, they didn't want me. Like for, for the AU team, then I went to him and he gave me a chance. He taught me a lot. He taught me. He taught me how to how that chip on my shoulder and how that dog me. So, yeah, that that this means a lot to me. He gave you that confidence. Yeah, he gave me. He definitely gave me a lot of confidence. And sometimes that's all a young person needs is a little bit of confidence, a little push. Like you can be great. Mm -hmm. And you felt you got that from him. Yeah, he's seen it in me that nobody else seen it in me. I've been. I was I went to a lot of AU tryouts. And then it was, he was the last one. Just stuck with it. You know what? I think, Robbie, there's something to that, though, where, you know, you get some players where they go to tryouts for AU and everybody mm -hmm. wants them, right? So 
sometimes you see kids that settle because everybody thinks they're great, everybody loves them. And then you've got that player that nobody wants early on and that makes you want to work that much harder and you talk about that chip. That's back to why I thought it was important to have you on here and talk about that chip, man. Yeah, it's, that's, that's a big part of like every day, even on the days I don't feel like playing. It's just, I just remember like where I came from and how that chip, how that chip on my shoulder and just, just go out every day and give it your all. Like, it's just, it's just a mindset thing now. It's just, I just, I just love it about me to be honest. Cause everybody don't have it so yeah. true and that 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 short little fat kid that you talk about mm -hmm. is now a thousand point scorer yeah when you scored your thousand point you hugged your father at the at the uh, middle of the court and you guys embraced for a while what did he say to you he just told me he just told me he was proud of me he, he teared up a little bit i could he tell told me, he told me he was just proud of me he kept telling me just he just told me to keep working for everything you got. It was just, he always told me that, just to keep working for everything you got, just like you've been doing, so. Now I've known your father, Ty, for, for a long time. Um, coached at Aiken for, like I said, for 11 years. Played basketball and soccer yeah. <laughs> at Mount Healthy. Uh, Mount Healthy job comes up and he's gotta go back home and, uh, and do that. But let me ask you this, because there are a lot of young people that get coached by their dad early on. Um, there aren't a lot of players that get coached by their dad at the highest level, like high school varsity, but some do. How has that experience been for you? Because your dad's coached you from freshman year, like varsity <laughs> in the grind all the way to now. It's, I know there's been ups and downs. Yeah. Why don't you talk it's about been, that a little bit? It's been crazy. It's been, like you said, it's been a lot of ups and downs. A lot of arguments, a lot of disagreements. So, but at the end of the day, it's my dad. So, and then he taught he taught me everything I know. So, and me and him got a good relationship. So it's just been it's been a fun four years, and I won't went no other way. So, it's it's been it's been good. And then, I all the days we disagreed and argued, it's just it's just been paying off, and I'm just thankful for it because everybody don't get to play for their dad. I think I think it's a good thing. Cause it's your dad, so right. I mean, and he knows the game. Now. Yeah, he knows. The, he's a he's a great coach, and then that's the thing. I just love seeing him. He he's got a lot better as a coach. He's always studying the game. Just he's all he's he takes it very serious. So you guys have kind of like grown together. Yeah. You think about it. He's grown as a coach. You've grown as a player together. Yeah, that's the thing. We just always like we stay together. Like it's just we got that bond. It's just. It's crazy. It's, it's hard to explain. Well, okay, so forget basketball. What type of father is he? He's a great father. He takes care of all his kids. He's, he's, a, great, he's a great person. So it's just, like, it's, it's easy for me to talk to him. And just, whenever something goes wrong, I can just go to him. It's just, yeah, he's a, great, he's a great person. He's a great dad. Now, hopefully, we'll talk about this here uh, shortly, but uh, hopefully you have the opportunity to play college basketball. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, when you go play college basketball, you're going to be coached by somebody else. That's going to be different. I know. <laughs> you have to get used to that. I am. It's, I've, that, I've been thinking about that a lot, too. I bet you have. It's just, but I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for the challenges. And it's, I feel like I could adjust to anything. And if it's, and if it's, right, if it's the right place for me, I should be fine. So. And your dad's prepared you. Mm -hmm. like he's prepared Definitely. you for that next, that next step to be able to go on and be your own person. Definitely. How does, let me ask you this too, I just thought about this. How does he coach you? Because he's got to coach his son a little <laughs> bit differently. And you're the best player. Uh, it's a little, it's a little more, I mean now it's a little more, I get away with a lot more, but the previous years he was on me hard. <laughs> like it was, it was bad. Like everything I did, I got yelled at for, it's just, that's why I think I'm just, I'm a good player. I'm also a good player because of him. Because every little thing, every little thing he tell me about it, he he lets me know about it. So he's gonna let me know. It, at, somebody else do some, they're gonna get yelled at. But it's just it's just different. I yeah. don't know. It's it's hard to explain. So yeah, I understand. Good stuff. It's, it's just a different tone. <laughs> I, I, I I bet I bet. But 
at the end of the day, you've earned your stripes to where you are now with him, and he's kind of given you a little bit more of a free reign. Mm, definitely. All right. Good stuff, man. Let's jump into your next item. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. This was last season. Yep. Junior correct? year. Yep. Junior year. Um, why don't you read it? Why don't you read that? Uh, first team my league in the C-Mac. So. Why'd you pick this to bring in? I picked that. I was thinking hard. It, it, it took me a lot to get three items. So, I was going to. Yeah. I always ask everybody, is that, is that difficult to <laughs> it, do? It was difficult to bring three items. So. I picked that because you said bring, you said it brings something to show your journey. And so freshman year, I played on a good Aiken team, a lot of seniors, but Beers being average 25. Then I think I averaged about 10, and I got honorable mention. And then sophomore year, we had a good team also. Had Jakarta Stone and Greg Stewart. Mm -hmm. I remember that squad. Yeah, and we um, Greg got hurt, but we ended up still – going to the sectional championship mm -hmm. and then I got second team that year and Jakarta got first team then last year it just something clicked and I went like I went off like it just I had a great year we underachieved but I like me personally I had a great year and then I ended up I, I didn't know nothing about it I ended up just hearing I had first team it's just like I was just like wow how I go from honorable mention, second team, to first team. Getting just better that work, every just year. getting better every year. That's what it means a lot to me. So, and then now this year I'm trying to play the year. So, it's just always I always set my bar high. And it's just whenever I get whenever I get there, I set it even higher. So, and that's good. You don't settle. Yeah. Because sometimes people will achieve an award like this. And they'll settle and go, okay, I'm good. First team, I'm good. This motivates you to reach even higher. Definitely. So, so let's talk about the next level, okay, as we talk about achieving goals. I know one of your goals, a lot, a lot like a lot of other kids, is to play college basketball. Definitely. That's always been a, a goal for mine since I was young, just to get my school paid for and go to college, play basketball, and get a free education. So I'm just I'm just ready for that. I just and I've just been that's just what I've been working for my whole life. So it's like I gotta I it's something I have to do. So I just hope it all work out and just I'm just keep working to get to make that dream come true. Now when you think about a college to play at, obviously there's a lot of things that factor in that. So you're thinking about a college, you gotta think about uh what style of play, the head coach, you gotta think about the academics. Uh, you have to think about the environment you're mm -hmm. in with the school. Uh, so when you're doing that, do you sit down with your parents? Have you talked a little bit about that? Talked about maybe what level and what type of schools? Uh, definitely, especially with my dad. I just sit down and talk to them and just see the style of play at the schools that's talking to me, and just just think about just think about because my next four years, that's where I'm gonna be at all by mm -hmm. myself so it's, it's a big deal and it's just some yeah it's, it's a it's a big decision so and Very i talk big. i sit down and talk to them about it a lot my mom she want to make sure i'm good for the next four years so definitely and i feel like you're going to be a player that gets to college and you're going to progressively get better and better i mean if you think about it uh, i'll tell you this story i've not told this story on camera ever but when carly jones was in high school, I told the Bearcats they needed to offer him. Like, he needs to be a Bearcat. <laughs> I saw it because I saw his growth as a player, right, his progression. And I knew when he got to college and he had the resources of the weight room and grinding 24-7, being able to get in the gym all the time, he's just going to go that next level. And I think he was under-recruited coming out of high school. Do you agree with that? He definitely was. 100%. <laughs> Uh, Bearcats, you know, didn't offer offer him, and I, and I don't mean to take a shot, you know, my Bearcats about that, but it just didn't fit, and I'm like, this kid is going to be one of the best college point guards. So when he jumps into the portal, he was the number one, one point guard yes. in the portal. Yeah. And ends up going to Louisville. 
He just recently played with the Mavericks against the Portland Trailblazers. So he's getting a shot with a 10-day contract in the NBA. So I'm saying all that to say that I feel like you're of that same type of, and it's just funny that you, you looked up to him and you were number one, but I put you in that same type of category where um, you've probably been under-recruited, and when you get to that next level, I feel like you're going to take off. Do you feel the same way? Yes, definitely. That, that's another thing why I look up to him so much, because I, I feel like, me and his journey is similar. Mm -hmm. He was a, a skinny, unathletic kid that just, he just worked. He worked, just motivated me to work out. Mm -hmm. So that's why I really like picked the, him as a role model because it's like, we kind of similar. I mean, I'm not saying that I would make it to the league, but it's just the concept, just him just working all the time, just working for everything that he got, just motivated me. I definitely think there are a lot of similarities. So let me ask you this. So for a young person out there that's watching this, mm -hmm. all right, what advice would you give them? I always tell people to just just always work hard, and then you got to have self-confidence. You got to have a lot of confidence. Basketball is really confidence. And if you, like, you, gotta, you just got to believe in yourself at all times. And then once you do that, you just gotta work at it and just get better. Now, now for you, and share this with the with the young folks. How do you develop that confidence? What's the formula? <laughs> What's been the formula for you? Um, just I don't know. Just because when I like, if you, I realize when if you work, you can work out all you want, but in the game. If you don't, if you don't have that confidence to where you just you apply what you work apply on. what you work on, it's it's no point. And that that was what my dad installed in me when I was young. Just cause it's no point of us working out if you're not gonna apply it in the game. So it's just I just it just clicked that I gotta have that confidence and I gotta like every time I step on the court I gotta know that I'm one of the best. So, and I feel like that's that's a formula. You put in the work, you grind and then you have success in the game, mm -hmm. right? So that gives you confidence, and then that gives you confidence to go back to the gym and keep working because you know I could have more and more success. I go from honorable mention, second team, to first team, and eventually Third play year. a year, right? Definitely. Now I'm going to ask you one question that I ask uh, a lot of the players that come on the show. When you're getting pumped up for a game, <laughs> What music do you listen to? And I wanna I wanna <laughs> tell you this. You know what Rayvon said? What do you say? Country music. <laughs> uh, you know Bowen Hardman. Yeah, I know Bowen. He says some jazz. So everyone it's not, yeah, it's not bad. That's ev not bad. Everyone <laughs> has a different has a different thing they do. For you, what is it? Uh I listen I listen to mostly just rap. Just just a lot of a lot of artists. Like V Herbo, Lil Baby. Uh, Little baby's your guy. Uh, That's yeah, one of your he's, favorites. Yeah, Little baby, Little baby hard. Yeah. Uh, just a lot of those rappers night. Like, that's in this generation. So, yeah, it's a lot of that rap music. It, it just gets me pumped. I, I feel it. To play. I feel it. So what I do is uh, when someone comes on the show, I've been doing it this season. What I do is I listen to their journey, mm -hmm. and I think about a, a lyric or set of lyrics from Jay-Z. So I'm a big Jay-Z fan. So right. growing up, Jay-Z was my pump up, mm -hmm. pump up music. You listen to Jay-Z at all? Nah, not really. Oh, uh, it's for the old heads. <laughs> yeah. I, see, I see how it is. <laughs> I, I see how it is. That's cool. So big Jay-Z fan. And when I listen to everyone's journey, I think about like, I feel like Jay-Z's music just throughout his entire career, he's always had something in there that's been like motivational, mm -hmm. at least for me. So this has me thinking, your journey, okay? And I'm thinking about like your grind, chip on your shoulder and all that. Jay-Z released an album in 1998, okay? So what year were you born? 2004. Jeez. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm bumping Jay-Z before you even thought about. So Jay-Z released a set of albums, 1997, 1998, and 1999. He dropped them uh, back, to back, you know, back to back to back. Uh, the first one was called Volume One. And the second one was called Volume Two, The Hard Knock Life. And that's the album I want to talk about. And there's a song on there called The Hard Knock Life. Have you ever heard the song? 
I think I did. I, I don't, I'm, I'm gonna listen to it. One I'm of the more popular it. ones. Yeah, I think it's yeah, the I Hard think Knock it. Life for. So he took basically a song from Annie to play, and he took that hook, which is kind of like a poppy type song, and he mm-hmm. gave it like a hard hip hop beat. But the message, the lyrics were like so deep, right? <clears throat> and I've thought about you as you're talking about a part in the song. I believe it's the third verse. Okay, you ready? He says, I don't know how to sleep. I got to eat. Stay on my toes. I got a lot of beef. So logically, I prey on my foes. Hustling's still inside of me. So as far as progress, it'd be hard pressed to find another rapper as good as me. And here's why I think about you. I don't know how to sleep. I got to eat. Stay on my toes. You've been grinding. Am I right? Definitely. You're right. Got a lot of beef. So logically, I prey on my foes. Not that you have beef, but when you're playing against somebody, Caleb Allen on Tuesday against Ed Wood, <laughs> you're praying on your foes. Am I right? Definitely, yeah. <clears throat> Hustling's still inside of me. So as far as progress, the hustling, the grind, as far as your progress, it'd be hard-pressed to find another rapper, in your case, another hooper, as good as you. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's pretty good. So I, I just wanted to, wanted to, that's a to bring it all together. Yeah. I want to make sure you, that should be your new pump-up song. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to, check on it out. Tuesday, I'm going to listen to it right I, before the game. I like that. You're going to come out and drop 50. <laughs> <laughs> you got to give you a shout out if you do that. I got you. Uh, just bringing this all together, man. I, I, and I thought, like I said, I thought it would be great to have you on. I'm, I'm glad your athletic director reached out to me because um, definitely you delivered on what I thought you would as far as your journey, your chip. And a lot of young people need to hear that because not everybody's blessed with, you know, being 6'5 and being able to dunk and have all these yeah athletic <laughs> right I was six five. but you know what though you're not six five and you could be six five and you can kind of rest on that and be like you know what i'm six five. instead you're like i'm five nine and i'm outworking it everybody more, yeah it gave you more motivation so right definitely i mean you think about you think about these shoes and you scored scored your thousandth point in that journey to get to a thousand point this jersey here represent when you first develop your confidence and this the progress of you going from honorable mention second team to first team and then setting that goal for player of the year player of the year which i think you're on course to achieve yeah and like i said man i'm gonna leave you on this man i think your best basketball is yet to happen i think it's going to happen in college um and like carlique with your journey you'll be under recruited when it's all said and done people go man we should have we should offer that guy. So yeah, hopefully. keep that chip. Um, keep grinding, man. And uh, I'm looking forward to – I might try to pull up and check out that yeah, Edgewood game. On, pull where, up. where is it? It's at Edgewood. I have to figure out how to get to Edgewood. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. It's far out. Yeah, so I gotta, it's, it's far out. I don't know where it's at. I have yeah. to check it out. So good luck, man. I know you're going to do well. Good luck on Appreciate your player it. of the year. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Appreciate it. All right, Robbie. One of the things that – people love coming on the show to get is the free Penn Station coupons, man. You like Penn Station? Yeah, I like Penn Station. There we go. Which Penn Station do you go to? I go to the one in my area. It's around the school. Right, Mount Healthy? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're here. You got a bunch of free subs, man. Appreciate Take it. your family, the girl, <laughs> whoever you want, man. Enjoy that. Give Penn Station a shout Appreciate out. Appreciate it. Shout out Penn Station.